Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about Commander on a budget. Today's episode is going to be on a Commander topic. These episodes can range from topics on the format in general to current news. This show and episodes like this one are possible because of viewers like you. So if you're looking for some easy ways to help support the show, make sure you like this episode and share it with friends. And make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Thank you to everyone who's already purchased our merchandise, it really does help support the channel. Another easy way to support this channel is by using our TCG Player affiliate links. So make sure that you're looking for those links in the description whenever you're buying a deck or just individual cards. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support. There was a lot of good discussion on my Commander Banless update episode about the specific bannings. However, I feel like we need to take a deeper dive on the dangers of banning cards in Commander in general. I want to thank those of you ahead of time that had some constructive comments, I really did enjoy those discussions. But before we really delve too deep into this episode, I want to preface this discussion with the most important thing to me, which is the health of the Commander format. I mentioned this in my last episode, and I'll say it again. Although I personally don't agree with the decision, banning both Paradox Engine and Iona may very well have been the right decision for the health of the format. We have absolutely no way of knowing at this point though, and my opinion is just an outside opinion coming from a singular perspective. And Commander is made up of an incredible number of different perspectives. The Rules Committee and the Commander Advisor Group have an impossible job since they will never be able to please everyone. They work very hard to do the best that they can, and I believe they have good intentions. The thing that matters most about all this to me is that people continue to enjoy Commander. It's my favorite format and I want to enjoy it for a very long time. That being said, let's get into it. Banning cards in Commander is a slippery slope to say the least. When you ban one card, it leads to justifications for banning others, and so on and so forth. And the question is, where does it all stop? Iona Shield of Ameria locks players out of the game, but so do other cards and they are not banned. So why shouldn't we have those cards banned too? To understand some of the thinking behind this banning, let's take a look at what the Rules Committee says about it. Iona Shield of Ameria creates a negative experience for many players without the benefit of a positive application. We had previously considered its high mana cost sufficient to keep it from getting played, but deeper investigation demonstrated many ways of getting it onto the battlefield without paying that cost. Iona Shield of Ameri is also an exemplar as the type of card which creates an experience we wish to discourage, namely shutting players out of games. That last part in particular I find really interesting. An experience we wish to discourage, namely shutting players out of games. Now by discouraging a type of experience, you're definitely going to be encouraging another type. To get a better idea of this encourage commander experience, let's take a look at the Rules Committee's philosophy of commander. Commander is for fun. It's a socially interactive multiplayer Magic the Gathering format full of wild interactions and epic plays specifically designed as an alternative to tournament magic. As is fitting for a format in which you choose an avatar to lead your forces into battle, Commander focuses on a resident experience. Each game is a journey that players share relying on a social contract in which each player is considerate of the experiences of everyone involved. This promotes player interaction, intergame variants, a variety of playstyles, and a positive communal atmosphere. At the end of an ideal commander game, someone will have won, but all participants will have had the opportunity to express themselves through their deck building and gameplay. Now I like the sentiment of this philosophy, but the part that sticks out to me is where a variety of playstyles is mentioned. It seems with some of the decisions that are being made when it comes to bannings that there are playstyles that are deemed as more acceptable than others. Commanders for fun, but only if you play within these playstyles. A cat tribal deck is completely fine, but a combo deck or decks that lock out your opponents are decks that should be discouraged. Because there's absolutely no way that people could have fun playing those. Now, I for one don't like to play against decks that combo off right away or lock me out of the game without winning quickly, but there are plenty of people out there that are completely fine playing with and against those decks. Are they wrong for wanting to play Commander that way? They are playing with the exact same rules that are set that everyone else is playing with. Commander may have been designed to be played one way and that's great, but it is something that has evolved over time to the point where it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. It has become something that has grown beyond its original design and intention. Those who invented the format may have intended for it to be played in a certain way, but that doesn't mean that other people can't take the rules of the format and play it in whatever way they would like to. Commander has become bigger than any one person or any group of people. Another quick note about something that I found curious about this philosophy statement was pointed out by Jim from the Spike Feeders on Twitter. It was about the line that says, at the end of an ideal Commander game, someone will have won. Jim points out that if someone winning is a goal of an ideal game, why is Divine Intervention allowed in this format? Clearly, if you are playing it, you have no intention of actually winning the game, you are just trying to cause a draw for whatever reason. Should this card then be banned since it goes against an ideal game of Commander? No. The best part of Commander is that you don't need a reason on why you actually want to play a Divine Intervention deck that tries to end the game in a draw. If that's your version of fun, go for it. Let's go a little further down into the philosophy of Commander with this paragraph. Commander is designed to be a malleable format. We encourage groups to use the rules and the ban list as a baseline to optimize their own experience. This is not license for an individual to force their vision onto a playgroup, but encouragement for players to discuss their goals and how the rules might be adjusted to suit those goals. 
The format can be broken. We believe games are more fun if you don't. I find the part that says, this is not licensed for an individual to force their vision onto a playgroup to be a bit hypocritical. Because isn't that exactly what the rules committee does with bannings and unbannings? They don't like it when people are playing in certain ways. Those ways involve Paradox Engine and Iona. Those cards are now banned because they don't like the way that people use them. I mentioned this in my previous video. Yes, you can play with your playgroup however you would like, and that is a great thing. Your group can choose to ban or unban anything. Your group can also choose to start with 600 life. It doesn't matter. Whatever is fun for your group, go ahead and do that. But when it comes to banning cards, you are still affecting how people play the game in public, which many people do. The part that really stands out to me most out of this paragraph is, the format can be broken. We believe games are more fun if you don't. And that's exactly where I'm seeing these banning decisions coming from. That singular perspective on how every single person should be enjoying this format. There are many people out there who enjoy doing game-breaking things in Magic. I, for one, love constructing budget decks that have a ton of synergies which can lead to some explosive turns and can come back and win out of nowhere. All of this, I and many others do within the Commander Rules set. This format isn't just for Timmies and Tammies, it's for everyone. Johnnies and Jennies want to build really complex, synergistic decks that yes, might combo off sometime. Spikes want to win at basically any cost and want to prove how good they are. Mel's are focused on mechanics, and Vorthos are focused on flavor. I apologize if I'm oversimplifying this, but I just want to get my point across. The bottom line is, Commander is made for everyone. Each and every single one of these types of players should be allowed to play Commander. You can't tell me that one way to play is the right way to play, and that the other way is wrong when both are following the same rules. But I also understand that each of these types of players might not be able to play against each other at the same table, and that's okay. Playing with or against certain decks or playstyles isn't for everyone, so communication is key. Have a discussion ahead of time if you're playing with people that you don't know. People are looking for different experiences and levels of play in this format, and that's one of the things that makes it great. So now let's get into why this format can work without trying to ban all the quote-unquote unfun or broken cards. The social contract is the real glue that holds this format together. You have the rule set as well as that social contract. But the aspects of that social contract differs from group to group and person to person. For example, some groups despise mass land destruction and won't allow it. And others like those who play CEDH are completely fine with it and don't play with those kinds of limitations. They set expectations ahead of time just like anyone else. The only difference is that many people enjoy playing with certain limitations, including myself, and they don't. You can't tell people what they should find to be fun. If you go to a table at your LGS, you can ask what kinds of decks or how powerful of decks people are playing. You're not doing it to try to get insider information or an advantage on them. You simply do it to understand what the expectations are and what level of deck everyone is going to be playing. By understanding the social contract, everyone's on the same page. Now in this scenario, let's say that you walk up to a table of CDH players. You can't tell them that they all need to change how they play to make you happy. If expectations aren't set ahead of time and the social contract isn't agreed upon, yes, there can be some feel-bads. If a Stax player is going up against a Therese Nielsen artist-inspired deck, chances are neither is going to have a good time. That doesn't mean that one play style is right or wrong. People just have different preferences on what they want to play, and that's okay. But saying that people at your LGS can't play a certain play style is just wrong. With the decks that I like to build, I wouldn't enjoy playing against the Stax player or the Therese Nielsen-inspired deck either. But for some reason, I only hear people calling for bans that relate to the more competitive one of the two. No one is calling for people to ban Jank, Vorthos, or Artist-inspired decks, and yet I would find them to be just as problematic to play against. At the end of the day, everyone should be able to play with the cards that they want to play with. If you want to more consistently find people that you want to play with in this format, work at it. Find or start to build a group of people that you enjoy playing with. That way, expectations are more easily understood. But even the expectations within your group can evolve, and sometimes you need to work to keep your playgroup healthy and in a good spot. And with this part, I can speak from personal experience. I don't play my Jory Rope whether I kept an Artifact Storm deck with my playgroup anymore because they don't have fun playing against it. They never even had to say anything about it specifically, but you can tell when you're in the middle of playing Solitaire for 20 minutes that other people might not be enjoying themselves. I'd love building that deck, and in fact, it might be the most synergistic deck I've ever built. If I'm playing against people that want to play at that level, then that's a deck I'll play with. I also love my Voltron decks like my Nezahal and Sram decks, but I had to cut back on playing them in certain groups too. The most optimal play for most Voltron decks is to take out one player at a time. Taking out someone in the first 5 minutes of a game doesn't always make them feel great when they have to watch the rest of the group play for another 45 minutes. Because of that, I choose not to play them in my playgroup very often. Commander takes a lot of things to work. Both communication and self-reflection are two of those big things. If you want to have an experience that you enjoy playing with others, you need to work on those things. Calling for cards to be banned because you personally don't like seeing them played isn't the solution. Just because people don't like playing against these kinds of strategies or decks doesn't mean that we should start banning these cards. I can build plenty of broken decks that many people would hate to play against even on a budget. My Evil Zer list that the instructor had me make is a deck that I would personally never actually play because it's just not my playstyle. Many Commander players don't like playing against decks that prevent them from quote unquote playing magic. Does that mean cards like Desolation, Mana Breach, and Energy Flux should be banned since they all work in that deck to shut down everyone else? Absolutely not. Are these cards even on the rules committee's radar? Probably not. 
There are a ton of cards that you'd have to ban before these to even get to them. There are plenty of people that do enjoy playing that way and find joy in the challenge of fighting off the deck that is trying to win in that way. One of the things that draws people into Commander is the openness and diversity of the format. You can build whatever you want. Whether you enjoy tribal decks, aristocrats decks, or token decks, there's a place for you. There's also a place for people who enjoy infect decks, chaos decks, and yes, even stacks decks. Famously, the creator of EDH Rec, Donald Miner, is actually a stacks player. Now, does that make him a bad person or mean that he is wrong to play in that way? No. In fact, it's incredible to hear about how he can turn pretty much any commander into a stacks build. Now, do I personally want to play against his stacks builds? Definitely not. But he should still be allowed to play them. There are plenty of cards that I personally don't want to play with or against. Ironically, the first two are actually found in an article by Sheldon Menery himself titled Commander Cards You Shouldn't Play. The first one of these is Winter Orb. Winter Orb can absolutely shut down decks and lead to some very long games depending on what deck is playing it. I would think it's pretty fair to say that Winter Orb is a much more oppressive card than a card like Iona in most situations. Iona costs 9 mana and only shuts down one color so chances are someone will have access to some way to deal with it. Winter Orb can come down early and in a deck like Urza it can be used to shut down everyone else and it has no effect on its controller. For most people, is Winter Orb a feel-bad card? Sure, but so are plenty of cards in Magic. Do I think this oppressive card should be banned so I never have any chance of seeing it again? No. Armageddon's another card that I don't like playing against. Like a lot of Commander players for the most part, Mass Land Destruction just isn't the way that I want to play. Now, on this channel, I did build a Mono Green Land Destruction deck, but I don't play with it. I personally just love brewing all kinds of decks. Now, just because I don't want to play that Kamal deck doesn't mean that other people can't. There are plenty of people out there that are completely fine with Mass Land Destruction, including Armageddon. So absolutely, Armageddon should remain unbanned. A final card that I don't want to play against is Warp World. It's an extremely chaotic card that can turn a game on its head, and it can lead to it taking forever. Some people truly just do want to watch the world burn. But people should be allowed to do that. There are plenty of people out there that enjoy playing with and against that chaos playstyle. So why should anyone tell them that they're wrong? Everyone deserves to play Commander in whatever way they want to play it. There is no right or wrong way to play this format, and that's what makes it beautiful. It might feel bad when someone shuts you out of a game with a card, but it's a bigger feel bad when that player is told that they can never play with that card again in the format that they love. If this format is truly meant to allow a variety of playstyles, then you can't pick and choose which playstyles are promoted and which are demonized. There should be no license for an individual to force their vision onto a playgroup no matter who that individual or set of individuals are. The rules committee can ban as many cards as they want. People will still find ways to play the game in ways that they won't agree with. Ban Armageddon and other mass land destruction spells, and people can still play Kamal land destruction which has basically no cards that could ever be deemed bannable by a reasonable person. Ban Paradox Engine and people start to combo off with Intruder Alarm or Jeskai Ascendancy. When you work to legitimize why one card should be banned, it only leads to more calls for more bans. So just let people play with their cards in the way that they want to play the game. Communicate ahead of time to understand expectations for a game. If you don't want to play a second game with someone, you don't have to. If you don't like the variability of running into decks that you don't like to play against, work to find a playgroup that fits into your expectations of the format. But don't force your vision on how everyone else needs to play Commander just so that they fit into the way that you want to play it. It's understandable that people want cards banned so that they are guaranteed not to play against them in public. You're not a bad person if you want certain cards banned. I just ask that you consider that there are people out there that truly enjoy playing with and against those cards that you dislike so much. Let me ask you which of these two is more reasonable. Is it more reasonable for you to get every single card that you dislike banned so that everyone plays your way? Or is it more reasonable for me to ask you to work to find people that you enjoy playing with and share the same expectations when it comes to playing Commander? I think the answer here is pretty obvious. Communicate and set expectations. I don't want Paradox Engine or Iona to be unbanned so that I can play with them. Even if they were budget, I wouldn't be playing with them, they're just not in my playstyle. I want them unbanned so that those who enjoy playing with them, can. There are plenty of people out there who are fine playing against these cards. There is more than just one perspective out there. And I know that my thoughts on all this is just a singular perspective. At the end of the day, we all want the Commander format to be healthy. To do that, a discussion needs to happen. Thank you for listening to my thoughts on this, and now it's my time to hear yours. I just ask that you keep the conversation constructive. And make sure that you're following us on social media for more updates and sneak peeks on future episodes. Links to our social media accounts can be found in the description. Also in the description below is a link to the Commander's Quarters Patreon page, and I just want to say a quick thank you to the patrons who have subscribed so far. There are many benefits to being a patron for the Commander's Quarters, including being able to vote on future Commanders for deck tacks. There's even a general level tier where you get your own personalized deck tack dedicated to you. I truly couldn't do this without all of your support, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, check out some of our other episodes on budget deck techs, quest for quarters episodes, commander topics, and creator's quarters. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again, and have a good one.